missing in action. You keep doing that, no one up here is going to call you Donald Trump anymore. We're going to call you Donald Duck. Republican candidates vying for their party's nomination for president of the United States. They were on the debate stage for debate number two last night. We're going to take a look at some of the hot issues and breakout moments. And a night of violence in the city of St. Louis, where one person was shot and killed and four others hurt in separate shootings across the area. And changes at the Rockwood School District, they caused some concern for parents why some are not happy with the graduation date that's been set. Good morning, welcome back. It's Thursday, September 28th. You are watching The Power of Two at 6 a.m. I'm John Pertzborn. I'm Blair Lede. Good morning to you all. You're taking a live look at Washington Avenue this morning. As you get your Thursday started, you are almost to Friday. <laughs> Angela <laughs> Almost has, there. Yes, Angela so has a forecast for you as we uh, inch closer to the end of the work week. Got some rain in some places. There's, yeah, there's some rain, uh, even some thunderstorms in places south of St. Louis. We have some pretty dense fog to the north and east of St. Louis. And other folks have had a great view of the almost full moon almost morning long. So it's a little bit of everything going on as our stubbornly slow moving cold front presses away to the south. It's still the fiery line for a few isolated showers and storms, especially right now near the Redbud area and then down south near Fredericktown. So spot showers on both sides of the river. And again, up north on the I-55 corridor, the I-57 corridor, we have some fog that's developed. So a little bit of action this morning, some more clouds around those spot showers to the south. But most of the area will be dry at that morning bus stop. Temperatures are in the 60s. This afternoon, more and more sunshine. We'll get that mostly sunny sky and our highs will be in the low to mid 80s later on this afternoon. Beyond this little hiccup of rain this morning, it's that dry warm forecast. We'll have it for you coming up in just a little bit. But we do want to check on your traffic situation this morning. And the good news area wide is that things are on the quieter side. That crash we had on the Blanchette Bridge westbound uh, in the five o'clock hour that has cleared traffic on I-70 there is on the move. We had this earlier crash out on I-64 at Prospect in the Lake St. Louis area. This was in the eastbound lanes. I just checked the MoDOT camera there. Traffic does appear to be on the move, but there does still appear to be a stalled vehicle in this area. So just heads up drivers headed out of the Wentzville Lake St. Louis area, maybe headed in uh, towards O'Fallon on towards the Chesterfield Valley. You may run into a slight delay in that area. Multiple shootings in the city of St. Louis overnight, all within a matter of hours. One person is dead, four others injured. All right now, the power of two's Chris Renier is live downtown where he's been talking to police. Chris. Blair and John, good morning to both of you. Authorities tell us so far there have been no arrests in any of these cases. We are just outside of police headquarters this morning. Although three of these shootings happened less than two hours apart, Authorities tell us there does not appear to be any connections between these crimes either. The violence started with a double shooting on Osage at South Broadway in the Dutchtown neighborhood of South St. Louis. Police rushing there just before 4.15 yesterday afternoon. Authorities tell us an 18-year-old male was shot in the head. He was pronounced dead at that scene. A 32-year-old man was also shot. He suffered what investigators say was an undescribed gunshot wound, and he arrived at a hospital, possibly by a private vehicle. He was conscious and breathing. Homicide detectives are handling this case because of that murder. The second shooting went down about 845 last night on the 3900 block of Greer in North City. That is in the Greater Villa neighborhood. Police tell us a man in his 20s was shot in the head there. He was not conscious and barely breathing when he was rushed to the hospital. Authorities told me he is in critical and unstable condition this morning. Although this case is currently being treated as an assault, homicide detectives have been activated because police believe death is considered imminent. Then just after 9.15 last night, police rushed to another shooting, this one on the 1500 block of Cole in the downtown West neighborhood, not far from the America Center. In that case, authorities say an adult male suffered gunshot wounds to both of his legs. He was taken to the hospital where police say he was listed as stable. This case is being handled as an assault first degree. And finally, police responded to yet another shooting just before 1030 last night. This one on the 4100 block of Nebraska in South City. That is also in Dutchtown. Police say an adult male was taken to the hospital by a private vehicle after he was shot. 
Authorities tell us it is still unclear where that man was hit. He was also listed as stable overnight, this case being treated as a first-degree assault as well. If you have any information on any of these cases, you are asked to call St. Louis Police or Crime Stoppers. For now, live downtown, I'm Chris Fernier. Thanks, Chris. It was a busy night of violence, and at the same time, police had to deal with a major staffing issue. The Fox Files learned the majority of St. Louis officers in one district called in sick during last night's second shift, the blue flu, they call it. The department was forced to use officers from other districts to fill the void. Fox 2 will not identify that district because it could create safety issues for police and the public. 6.05 is your time. Seven Republican candidates vying for their party's nomination for president took turns making jabs and competing for their breakout moments during last night's second GOP presidential debate. Doug Luzader takes a closer look at some of the hottest issues. Well, Donald Trump saw no reason to join the fight, and that's exactly what it was last night on a surprising range of topics. Did you send them back? It's the State Department. Did you send them, back? You send them back? You're the one that works in Congress. No, that, believe it or not, was an argument over government curtains, showing just how anxious some of these candidates were to go after one another. Excuse me. Thank you for speaking while I'm interrupting. Literally. While I'm speaking. Well, you said if I may finish. Some if I may finish. Our show. It was hard to get a word in at times, even between shots at President Biden. And I refuse to be a passive bystander sitting in the White House like the hollowed out husk of a current president we have. But beyond attacking Biden and one another, often the focus was on former President Donald Trump, who declined to participate. And you know who else is missing in action? Donald Trump is missing in action. You keep doing that, no one up here is going to call you Donald Trump anymore. We're going to call you Donald Duck. Thank you very much. Now for his part, Trump offered his own bit of counter-programming, speaking to auto workers in Michigan last night. He said his fellow candidates are hoping for a job in his administration. They'll do anything. Secretary of something. They even say VP. I don't know. Does anybody see any VP in the group? I don't think so. And each of these seven are essentially competing to be the prime alternative to Trump. And sharp elbows were the order of the day. Honestly, every time I hear you, I feel a little bit dumber for what you say. But at the same time, there were nods to the venue itself, the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library, and the man who stood for so long as the standard bearer for the party. The city on the hill needs a brand new leader, and I'm asking right. for your vote. After this, we may see the field begin to narrow somewhat as the party gets ready for its next debate in Miami on November 8th. In Washington, I'm Doug Luzader for The Power of Two. And uh, again, as we know, the GOP frontrunner, former President Trump, skipped the debate in favor of a campaign event in Michigan. He toured a non-unionized auto parts supplier outside of Detroit. While he was there, Trump spoke out against President Biden's plan to manufacture more electric cars in America. He's selling you out to China. He's selling you out to the environmental extremists and the radical left. You can be loyal to American labor or you can be loyal to the environmental lunatics, but you can't really be loyal to both. It's one or the other. Well, Trump's visit comes a day after President Biden joined striking workers on the picket line in Michigan. Well, some parents are not pleased with the new graduation date set for certain Rockwood high schools. Traditionally, the district's graduation day is after Memorial Day, but some high schools, including Lafayette, will now graduate on May 11th. Eureka High's graduation date is May 13th. The district's choice conflicts with other big events, including several college graduations. The district says they sent parents a notification in August about the school year ending earlier than normal and stated moving up the graduation aims to enhance the overall graduation experience. Well, changes are coming to Catholic elementary schools after the first phase of the Archdiocese All Things New plan. So starting next month, the Office of Catholic Education and Formation will meet with pastors about the long-term sustainability of their parish elementary schools. Pastors will then meet with the leadership of their school and parish and provide recommendations to the Archbishop. Those changes expected to be announced in December. Well, the Missouri Supreme Court was busy yesterday on Wednesday, and attorneys, a uh, number of them from across the state, are looking to overturn three new laws. So the morning began with attorneys from St. Louis City asking the court to toss out a law requiring cities to cover the costs of damages when police officers are found liable in misconduct cases. The second case is over the constitutionality of cracking down on homeless encampments, and the third involves Kansas City 
alleging voters were misled on an amendment forcing the city to spend more on its police department. Rulings have not yet been made on any of these cases. Well, the state of Missouri awards public safety medals today for heroic acts by first responders. Fallen St. Louis firefighter Benjamin Polson, he will be honored posthumously today with the Red, White and Blue Heart Award. Polson died in the line of duty in January of last year when the roof of a vacant home collapsed on him while he was looking for fire victims. Missouri Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe will preside over today's ceremony. It's at the Missouri Highway Patrol's Law Enforcement Training Academy in Jefferson City. <laughs> well, there could be a tax break for some of you in the future. It all depends. The St. Louis County Council is considering a plan today to give a property tax break to senior citizens. A committee of the whole will discuss whether the county should opt into a new state plan. It freezes property taxes for senior citizens who are eligible for Social Security. The county rejected this in July. Their revenue experts said that the plan could take millions away from schools, fire departments, and other public services. Well, St. Charles County approved the senior tax freeze two weeks ago.